So we had completed the process to prepare this van for sale in May and it had a max fan installed and right about that same time I saw two different companies release a efficient inverter air conditioning units and it made me think seriously that it was probably time for campmaker vans to start installing air conditioners in our camper vans. The two companies that show the most promise in terms of this efficiency that I've been talking about are Out, Equip Pro, and Country Mod. And both of them have a lot of different people that are installing them and running reviews. And so they both are almost the, the exact same, both efficiency and size and, and so on. But they, uh, they appear to be well made and uh, have some real, real potential. So the Country Mod unit is the one that we selected. And sometimes the air conditioner companies, marketing departments, will stretch the truth about the BTU ratings for the given air conditioner. Although it is very difficult to calculate an accurate BTU unless you have a good laboratory set up for this purpose. But what really matters is whether the air conditioner can keep your van cool when it gets really hot. I found the Country Mod air conditioner in turbo mode, which is close to 10,000 BTUs. It takes about an hour to bring the interior temperature down at least 20 degrees from the outside temperature, and then can be switched to run in either eco mode, which is drawing about 410 watts, or sleep mode, which is drawing about 310 watts. It also has a fan only option, which is about 23 watts. So when running in these lower wattage phases, it also is using a lot less BTUs. One of the biggest benefits of these new air conditioners is they were made to fit inside the standard 14 by 14 opening that's common for RV vents over the last like 60 years. In a couple of hours, I was able to remove the max van and prepare it to, to install the new air conditioner. The Country Mod unit is 57 pounds, and so it's quite a bit lighter um, oftentimes the other air, con air conditioners are like 90 pounds or maybe 100 pounds. So it's a lot easier to lift up onto the roof, but it's also a lot easier for the roof to handle that extra weight. Uh, it's not uncommon for van builders to have to build in heavy uh, steel rods to provide the reinforcement for the air conditioner on the roof. And in this case, the, the support beams that I put in for the max fan are actually fine to use for this air conditioner. This air, air conditioner is also a very low profile. It's only seven inches tall and, and quite streamlined. So I think it won't have any, any significant degradation from the gas mileage when you're going down the freeway at 65 or 70 miles an hour. And here's a picture of the interior unit for the air conditioner. It's about two inches thick, so it doesn't uh, protrude too deeply into the vehicle. And uh, the vents work well, and uh, the control panel is, is easy and, and user friendly. One of the things I'm intrigued about is whether a 280 amp hour battery can be practical to push these air conditioners. And so in this case, the, the van has one battery like this. And so the test that we, we did was with the 280 amp hours, if at some point uh, additional battery was needed, there is space to add another 280 amp hour battery. But I'm very pleased that with the test that we did, it, it, it can work well with just this one battery. To charge up the battery bank, we have a Kisei DMT 1250, which is a 50 amp solar and DC to DC, which means you're charging from your alternator. And then to document the battery charging progress and know the battery state of charge is a Victron Smart Shunt, which includes a Bluetooth app. So June in Oregon isn't traditionally really hot, but Sunday, June 8th, 9th, and 10th, we, we have a, a heat wave coming through our area, and it seemed like it would be a good time to do a test of the air conditioner. So we ran the air conditioner from 1 p.m. till 8 p.m. It was um, 95, 96, 97 degrees outside, so quite a bit of heat. And we set the temperature on the air conditioner to 75 on the inside. We tested out all the different settings, both turbo and eco mode, as well as sleep. And at the same time, we were generating 
solar energy to offset the, the power needed to run the air conditioner. We began with 100% charge on the battery, so it was a 280 amp hour battery. And at the end of the time, we had used 103 amp hours and we were down to 63%. So overnight, we opened up the windows and let the van cool off. And then it was doing some recharging in the morning and got the battery up to the 77%. But about noon, it was obvious that we needed to uh, start the air conditioner so it was because it was getting pretty warm. It did get up to about 94 degrees during the day. The temperature in the inside the van, um, we set it on eco mode, and so it was about a couple degrees warmer. So instead of 76, it actually was 78 degrees. But this also allowed a little bit less uh, power being utilized, so it would saved about 24 amp hours of power and at the end of the test at 7 o'clock tonight um, it ended up with 49 percent of the battery remaining. You know there are a lot of different ways to manage how you deal with the, the heat when you're camping and so clearly you know parking in the shade is one of the best things you can do as well as the ability to if you are traveling from one spot to another you're going to generate a lot more power using the DC to DC charging. In, in my case, I can get uh, right at 50 amps for every hour of, char of, of driving. And so uh, if I drove for like three or four hours, um, then you're going to recharge a lot of that, that power that was used for the air conditioning and be able to have air conditioning ready for that next night. 